back everybody this is sky guy 264 and today i want to show you guys uh the tier one boss battle <laughs> so you're gonna see me slapping away at this guy uh if you've never done this before what we're going to be focusing on is doing a hit and run strategy the reason being is the boss one has i think it's 24 million health and he does a boatload of damage when he hits you so unless you have some absurdly high heroes you will end up dying if you stay in too long. What we, we plan to do is we drop one hero to gain aggro. While the boss is running towards that hero, we drop everybody else. Now you're going to drop them in between where the boss is and where your uh, tank or your, your aggro getter is. And this allows all of those troops or all these heroes to hit the boss at least once uh, before he can get to your, your, your main puller. <laughs> now watch how I drop it I'm putting it far enough away that it requires the boss to walk a little bit but not so far away that my well in my in this case I'm dropping a Cyclops that the Cyclops has to walk a real long time before pulling the boss you really don't want to put it too far if you put it in the far right corner for instance it's absolutely too far you're just gonna be wasting a ton of time Right? You're probably going to be running this with your guild, and you're going to be wanting to maximize damage to get in one of those top 10 slots. Why? Because you get more honor from those top 10 slots. So, what you want to do is spend as little amount of time in the actual boss battle as possible to do the most damage. So you walking all the way from that corner would just take far too long, you'd not be as efficient as possible, and so your damage wouldn't be high enough. So if you pay attention, I'm putting it just, well, if you see where the end battle button is, I'm putting it just you know, a little bit beyond that point, which is just outside of the boss's aggro range. The second that boss aggros, and you can tell because he'll usually change direction abruptly and start walking towards, well, in this case, my uh, Cyclops. So the second he changes direction, then I drop down everybody else in the middle of where he's about to walk. Um, and it, it allows me to do a decent amount of damage. Now, beyond just the obvious, how should you go around picking a, uh, a uh, the, the right hero for pulling the boss? And so there, there's a couple different things that you have to think about. One, if they have a high enough HP. So obviously they, they want to be able to tank at least a hit. If you can do two, that would be great, right? Because the longer you're in there, the more damage you're going to be able to do. So something like Paladin, Alanacor, maybe even Druid if it's high enough level, uh, you're going to need to be able to take some big hits, over 10,000, over, I, I, can't rec I can't remember, it's been a long time since I've actually done boss one, if he does 16,000 or not, but he's in like the 12,000 range or so, eh, hopefully I'll, I'll add later to exactly what he hits. Um, so you'll need somebody that's able to tank that damage, if you don't have anybody that, that's high level. You can still do the boss battle. Uh, for instance, if you have a hero with a revive talent, that's absolutely perfect. You can use him as your aggro puller. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe that. Um, so he'll he'll pull the boss, and after he gets hit once, he will die, revive, and you will still be you won't be losing any heroes. Because really, you don't want to be spending the gems like you see me doing right here uh, to, to have to revive every time. It's First of all, it's slow as all heck, right? Because now you have to actually go through those button clicks. Meanwhile, everybody else is repeatedly hitting the boss and you're falling lower and lower in the leaderboards. But also, you don't want to lose those gems. I mean, you have so many other things you can use gems on. Gem, you got talent rolls, you got hero rolls. You might need to buy a bunch of those slots still in your uh, hero altar. So it's just not worth it to always have to do that. So really you want to find a strategy that you don't have to do that for. Now, even if you don't have a high HP hero, if you don't have a hero with a revive talent, you can still use a level one to go ahead and pull the boss. Because as soon as they die, um, I think, what, what's the respawn timer? Oh, I don't even remember. It's only a couple seconds. So by the time you end battle and re-enter again, he will have revived, um, and you will be able to go ahead and hop back into the boss and do it all over again. All right, so you do your initial pull. You plop down your, your, your aggro getter. <laughs> That's my unofficial term for it. Uh, the boss comes towards you. You drop everybody else in between, 
they hit, and then what, right? To be able to get the most damage in a single round, and that's what I'm gonna call every single time we hop in to try to kill the boss, um, you want to time that next swing. And what I mean by that is, watch the boss right now. See him, he winds back, he drops his ax. Since you know your first hero will die, probably, or maybe he'll tank that first da that first hit, uh, you, you watch him do that first chop down <laughs> with the ax. And then you wait, you watch him, he'll pull back, and that's when you want to exit. Right before the point you're going to lose your first hero. Now, that if you have a revive hero, that might be the second hit, because he'll, he'll kill your revive first, and then he'll target somebody else. Maybe it's the third hit. You know, it all just depends on your team composition. But anyway, to get the most damage that you can, you can time it so that when he fully pulls back that axe, that's when you exit. Right before you're about to lose that hero, and it lets you hit for the most amount of time. Now it's tricky. I, I mess it up all the time in this, in, in this video. You can watch me use these gems over and over and over again as I'm trying to figure out the exact timing that I need. Uh, but if you can do it, it might score you those extra one or two hits from, you know, from one or two of your heroes that will push you over the top above other people. So we talked about not putting your your puller, your tank, <laughs> I already forgot what I called it, your tank too far in the, the arena because you don't want him to walk too far, but you also can't put him too close. Now, obviously you can put him close. <laughs> um, but you're just going to lose out on those that free swing that you're going to get from all of your heroes while the boss walks to your tank. And really, you want that because at this low level, you're not going to get any other hits off of it. So if you put them directly on it, you probably aren't going to be getting as much damage as you could be. So, I mean, that's the basic boss battle right there. You can see me running it over and over and over again here, just trying to optimize my damage. So now I've seen some mistakes from other people and let's try to iron those out now before you even start doing it a lot. Uh, while you're in the middle of a boss battle, don't check the leaderboards. <laughs> like it seems silly, but those seconds that you take off every, you know, every couple turns, every couple rounds through this boss, is just damage you are leaving off the table. You are losing out on this damage and you're probably going to screw yourself as far as your honor gains as a result. So don't check the leaderboards, just wait till the very end to see how you did. It's, it's not worth it. Likewise, there is a sort of, I don't know if I should call it a trick, but when you click end battle here, let's wait a second here, here I click end battle. Now I double click that exit button sometimes. Why? Because it hovers right over the enter to, uh, um, uh, what am, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to look for. <laughs> the, the button that you click to enter the boss battle, it, it is positioned nearly under the exit button. So what that allows you to do is if you double tap it, you will be able to enter the boss battle that much faster. Like it's before the UI has even had a chance to, to load, but it'll still capture that button click and it'll click you into the boss battle without that what split second delay of looking at the leaderboards so if you do that every single time you'll just be able to get that much more damage every single round so that's about it for boss one i really made this video for you know you guys who haven't had a chance to run the first boss yet the tier one boss and to just give you a, an idea you know of what you are in for it is brutal and boss two and three only get harder from here so Find a guild, run it with a guild, learn boss one, work your way up. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to get extra honor. Right now I'm super capped <laughs> on honor for all my heroes on this account. So that's why I decided to hop in here and just mess around a little bit, see how much damage I could do. I think in the end I managed to do about, I think it was only it was five or six million damage over the course of a half hour, which is really tiring. But if you've got a full guild, that makes it so much easier. Or if you've got that one heavy hitter who can almost solo the boss, then you don't have to do as much damage and you can just focus on doing your damage, topping out the leaderboards as best as you can, and just reaping the rewards. 
Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying these videos. Leave me comments. I love comments. I love them so much. <laughs> I haven't had much time lately to respond to all of them, but I've been getting caught up, so we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything I can do to improve. I want to make these videos as best as I can for you guys. All right. My name is SkyGuy264, and until next time, take care, everybody.